Right, so question four now, this is the electricity question. So we have a little bit of an introduction here with the wire and the terminals that are connected to it. Um, but the question ultimately is just a basic electricity question. So we first of all know resistance of the wire, the length of the wire, and the resistivity of the metal, and we tried to find the diameter of the wire. So firstly, we need the equation for resistivity. So R equals rho L over A. So that's the resistance of a wire as a function of its resistivity, which I've written as a slightly different way here. But that's the equation there on your formula sheet. So we want to find the diameter. So to find the diameter, we need the area. So A is equal to rho L over R. Okay. So rho is... 9.7 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. Uh, we need to times that by the length, which is 0.5 naught, and we need to divide that by the resistance, which was this value here, so 0 0.070 there. So let's put that into our calculator. 9.7 times 10 to the minus 8 times by half divided by 0 0.07 gives us that value there. So that's 6.92857 dot 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 times 10 to the minus 7. That's the cross-sectional area. We want the diameter. So the diameter divided by 2 squared times by pi is equal to the cross-sectional area there. So if we want to rearrange that for the um, to get D, we have D is equal to, that squares goes up there, so you've got 4A divided by pi, and then we need to get rid of that square there, so square root there. You can do that in multiple steps if you want and show yourself that that's the correct way. So that's going to equal that there, so it's 4 times by this, 6.928 dot 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 times 10 to the minus 7, whoops, run into there, divided by pi, all square rooted, so let's do that now. So times that by 4, divided by pi, and square root the answer gives us the diameter is equal to 9.3924 times dot 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 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, sig figs, two sig figs we want it to. So it's 9.4 times 10 to the minus 4, 2SF. Okay. Right, in order to measure the resistance we of a working probe, we connect it to this circuit here. This is a bridge circuit, it's a very common circuit. Um, you may get asked something similar to this. When R is adjusted to a particular value, the current in the cell is 0.66 amps. So 0.66 amps is flowing all the way through that section there, and then it splits up down there and comes back there. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So we need Ohm's law. R is equal to V over I. We can apply Ohm's law to any individual part or the whole thing in one go. So let's do it to the whole thing. So the total supply voltage is 1.5 volts and the current is 0.66. So we do 1.5 divided by 0.66 gives us 2.272727. So that's 2.2727 dot dot dot. So uh, we, two significant figures will be 2.3 ohms. The resistance of R2 is 22 ohms. Let's write it on. As we learn things, we can write them on. And the resistance of R3 is 1.2 ohms. Calculate the current in R3. So we want the current in this branch here. So we'll call that, I don't know, I3 for the current going through R2 and R3. Right. So use Ohm's law again. I3 is equal to V divided by R. So the voltage across this branch here is still 1.5 volts. 
that's 1.5, divided by the resistance of this branch. This branch here has two resistors in series. To find the resistance, you add the two resistors together because they're in series with one another. Okay, so we're just looking at that branch, so we're completely ignoring that bit. So don't think that it's a parallel circuit. We're just looking at this bit here, which these two components are in series with one another. So we can just add the two resistances together. So we have 1.5 divided by 22 plus 1.2 gives us 0 0.064655 amps. Okay, so round that give us 0.065 amps to 2 SF. So we need to calculate the resistance of the probe when the resistance of R1 is 2.4 ohms. So let's write that on the diagram as well. So I'm going to call this one, I don't know, Let's call it IP for I that goes through the probe, the current that goes through the probe, you can call it whatever you like. We know the resistance of that, we don't know the resistance of that, we know the current that's going through that, and we know the potential across that whole section there. So we can work out the total resistance of that section there, but first of all we need to work out this current. So we know that 0 0.66 amps is coming in, we've got 0 0.06465 dot, dot, dot amps coming that way, so the rest must go that way. That's Kirchhoff's first law, or the current law. The total current entering any place must be the total current leaving it. You've got to count for all the currents. So 0 0.66 comes in, 0 0.66 has to come out. So IP is equal to 0 0.66, take away the current that goes that way, 0 0.064655 dot 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 and that gives you the current going that way. So let's work that out to start with. We get 0.66 take away our previous answer gives us 0 0.59534 amps. Okay, now we can work out the resistance of this entire branch here. So we know the potential difference across it. So R is equal to V over I. So this is the total resistance of branch A. I should have called it IA, shouldn't I? Never mind. Um, so that's 1.5 volts divided by the current that's going through this, which is 0 0.59534. So that's 0.59534 amps going that way. So we need to do 1.5 divided by that answer. And hopefully that gives us a number bigger than 2.4. Yes, it does. So that's 2.51954 dot 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 ohms. Okay, so that's the resistance of this entire branch here. That is. So if you want the resistance of this bit, these two add up to that. So you just do this number, take away that number. So R probe is equal to this value, 2.51954, the resistance of that branch. Take away the resistance of that. So let's take away 2.4. And we get 0 0.1195, etc. So that is 0 0.12 ohms to SF. Right. Calculate the percentage change in the diameter of the probe when its resistance increases by 1.6%. Okay, so we can do this one of two ways. We can either just work it out, or if we remember our percentage uncertainties, we should know how to work this out as well. So first of all, we need the equation for resistance. So R is equal to rho L over A. But A is proportional to the diameter squared. So we have R is proportional, all these things are fixed for any given length of wire. 
So one over the diameter squared. Okay, so to increase something by 1.6%, you times it by 1.016. But we've got a square here, so when we want to find the percentage change in D, we need to square root it all, or square root the percentage change in, in resistance to find the percentage change in D. So, so we square root this because the resistance here needs to be square rooted to be proportional to the diameter. So we take a calculator, we get 1.016, we square root that, and it gives us 1.0079, etc, etc. So this is the same as one, essentially 1.008, and that is an increase of 0.8%. It's actually a decrease of 0.8% if you decrease the diameter of the resistance increases. So when you square that percentage, so 1.008, if we square that, we end up with an increase of 1.6%. Now there is a shortcut to that answer if you remember your rules when it comes to percentage uncertainties. The percentage uncertainty, when you have a square in like that, um, because you have to count it twice, you add it in twice. So the percentage change in D must be added to itself twice to get that. So it's going to be 1.6 divided by two, which is 0.8%. So you could do it without any calculations. Right. Uh, Question 4.6, I'm a voltmeter is connected between A and B and the, this here stays at 1.2 ohms. Explain without calculation why the reading on the voltmeter doesn't change when the cell on the circuit is replaced by another with significant internal resistance. Um, I refuse to answer this question because it's uh, nonsense. The question is, is wrong. The, the voltmeter reading would change. I can show you that very, very simply. Uh, if you think of, if you put something here, say that the potential difference between here was one volt. Okay, so imagine the potential difference there was one volt. If I put in the world's biggest internal resistance here, so that meant that the current going um, through here was absolutely tiny, that would mean that I could lose almost all of my potential difference across my um, internal resistance there as lost volts, so I'd have virtually no potential difference between there and there. So if I've got no potential difference between there and there, then there's also no potential difference between there and there, so that would now be zero volts. So therefore the potential difference between A and B has changed. Now this is one of the two mistakes on this paper which infuriated me when I saw the paper first time. Um, and AQA still refused to accept that this is a mistake, so, but it does change. Okay. Um, right, moving on.